And one man who may know more than most what might happen next is Tony Burke, the Minister for Sustainability, Water and the Environment. He's a colleague of Kevin Rudd's, of course, and a supporter of the Prime Minister's. Tony Burke, welcome. I'm guessing, Chris, we're not talking about the Murray-Darling like we were planning to at five o'clock today. No, we're not. Uh, did Kevin Rudd jump before you were about to push him? I'm glad that it's now being resolved, and I think that's the most important thing. Uh, everybody has had enough of the stealth and undermining campaign that has been going on through the caucus and through the media for a very long time. And, you know, the fact that Kevin's been openly campaigning for the leadership has been the worst kept secret in Canberra. Uh, over the last few days, uh, after they'd talked up their level of support in the caucus very, very strongly, uh, the, what they thought they had as support has actually been peeling away rather than growing. Uh, and if you, you have a look at the speech that's been given today and you look particularly at some of those final paragraphs, uh, it's a, a speech that's not exactly aimed at, at continuing to be constructive. Well, certainly we'll get to that in a moment, but people must be asking themselves about who they believe in Australian politics now because you say it's been the worst kept secret in Canberra. But in fact, for months now, the Prime Minister and every other senior minister, yourself included, who's been asked about this, has said there is no campaign. We're all happy campers. And so how can people now trust what's said in public life? Well, what we've had a situation is where most of us have believed that because there was so little support uh, for the undermining campaign that was happening, uh, that was running pretty strongly in the media, uh, we believed it would go away naturally. Uh, of course, it's been kept up. There's more barbs in the speech today that are, that are aimed uh, within that. Uh, but that's, that's what Kevin's been doing. You, you try to hold the line for as long as you can. Uh, you try to hold the line and believe that there'll be a level of goodwill. Uh, but ultimately, it's not sustainable, I guess, when somebody uh, wants to continue the active campaign, undermining the government, and by virtue of that, undermining the interests of the people who rely on us. What do you think needs to happen now? Should there be a ballot? He certainly has indicated that that seems to be on his mind. Yeah, you, you look at those final words and it looks like he's, he's trying to wait for a few dramatic moments to, to gradually make the announcements, but that appears to be where, where he's wanting to head. Uh, I think people just want it resolved. I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone uh, that there's a couple of different views. I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that the overwhelming support within the parliamentary party um, is for the Prime Minister, is for the government. It, it's overwhelming. It always has been. Uh, people have talked up through the media and got away with some pretty significant lies to journalists uh, claiming high levels of dissent within the government. And now, finally, next week, I think we see a situation where that does get resolved. Will there be a ballot? Oh, that's, that's up to the Prime Minister. It's, and uh, you know, I, I don't believe Kevin could bring it on. You need a particular level of support to even be able to 35. do that. Um, but uh, it's up to the Prime Minister how, how that's handled. Won't it not be resolved at all unless there is a ballot now? And, and if there is, can you give us some level of what you think that Kevin Rudd's support might be now? Oh, look, it's, um, I've, I, I, I haven't been um, doing that sort of a tally or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, work on this basis. Newspaper reports that claimed people were in particular boxes one of the people who was listed in the media as being undecided appears on television yesterday saying he's happy to have the name of the Prime Minister tattooed on, get, on a tattoo if that's a way of getting the message across. Sure. The, but if the, Kevin Rudd the, gets the 30, claims, 35 the, votes or thereabouts, that's a third of your caucus, a caucus of 103 just about, that would mean that from then on we would be able to say to the Prime Minister a third of the people who are in your own caucus no longer support you. Uh, and there, there, were, there were times within the Howard Costello government when Costello troops would go out with different levels of support. And it was never I mean, I, 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 no, I really think on this, Chris, the, that we get back to the, the fundamentals. There's, there's two jobs for a government. The government has to be able to conduct its reform agenda and, and govern in the interests of, of the Australian people. And secondly, you need to then be able to communicate to the people uh, what it is that you're doing. Now, on the first of those two tasks, this government's actually got a really good track record. Uh, on the second one, we've been unable 
through the storm of the undermining campaign that Kevin's been behind, to really talk in interviews about anything other than the issue that we're against. It's not just that, is it? Though it's, it's, the, it's the judgment of the Prime Minister that's been called into question routinely, and that's the reason why Kevin Rudd has had creeping support. It's not just what Kevin Rudd's been doing, it's the way the Prime Minister's been handling herself, isn't it? Oh, when, when you describe creeping, creeping support, uh, I disagree completely with the, with the premise of that. Well, it'll Chris. be tested soon. We'll be able to test these words against it, won't we, Tony Burke? Oh, and I'm, I'm glad it's coming to a head. Uh, I, I really am. Uh, the Prime Minister's always had the overwhelming support. Uh, and you don't want to have a situation where the undermining of the government has, has continued to be run. Uh, it had to come to a head. And... Uh, today, I mean, what we've seen is a political calculation from Kevin, uh, a very clever politically calculated speech that sure. he's given. And, and beyond politics, can you tell us what the policy difference was between Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard when he was dumped as Prime Minister? And should he challenge again, what's the substantive policy difference between the two? There is nothing in this but politics, is there? Oh, no, no, no. There is a, a very substantial difference, Chris. And it is? In the way the government is run. And the stories that were around of the chaos, of the temperament, uh, of the inability to have decisions made, they are not stories. And again, when heard. those stories were told, ministers like yourself, who was actually at the receiving end of some of this, denied it. And as, as I've said, there was a lot of loyalty that was shown under the previous government as we tried to fix these issues. These issues, in actually being able to govern in the best possible way, were fixed with the Prime Minister that we have. Kevin and Rudd says that uh, the faceless men should no longer run the party. Is that uh, not a reasonable thing to say? Oh, look, it's a bit much when, when you're, you're overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly having your colleagues say, please stop the undermining, to claim that your colleagues who are all elected members of Parliament are faceless people. It's a, it's a really desperate last-ditch argument, and it's being run for one reason. Uh, and that's it'll play well in the media, it'll get some grabs. Tony Abbott's grabbed it straight away. Uh, that, that speech was yet another gift to Tony Abbott. I'm, I'm hoping that Kevin calls a halt on that sort of behaviour soon. And who is best placed to beat Tony Abbott? Julia Gillard. How on earth can she manage to do that now? Don't you look before the eyes of the Australian people like a complete and utter rabble? Oh, the, as long as the undermining campaign continues, you have a fundamental problem. Of course you do. And that there's no point denying that. There's no point edging away from that. That the undermining campaign, which has been happening, which has been the worst kept secret in Canberra, needs to stop. I believe as a result of today, we've now got a way that it will stop. Kevin Rudd has clearly outlined to journalists in Canberra that he has a two-step approach to this. He's going to take the Paul Keating idea, and that is to get close enough to the Prime Minister to do her serious damage, bide his time for another couple of months, and then have another go. Do you think that that is something that he might be contemplating, and how then does the government govern? Well, Paul Keating's colleagues didn't know what Paul would be like as Prime Minister, so it was a very different situation. You don't imagine that that will be his plan, and that he might try something like that? I would have thought when the colleagues have such an overwhelming view, there has to be a point where you stop doing Tony Abbott a favour. Should, uh, should Kevin Rudd now quit Parliament? Is that the only way that you can be sure that there'll be no more attacks on the Prime Minister? No, no, no. We, we have plenty of people on the backbench who do good work on the backbench, the representing their areas, <laughs> representing their seats. And, and if he's on the backbench, I think it's a, a bit rude to every other member of the backbench to be saying that somehow uh, he believes that it's, it's not, fit, not fit for him to, to be there. I, I refuse to believe that, that Kevin would put himself forward saying he likes the party enough that he wants to lead it, but then would be willing to cause that sort of damage. Finally, now, don't you think that this is something that should be put back to the Australian people? Shouldn't we have an election to try and work out who the Prime Minister should be? We've, we've had an election. We've got a parliament that demands people who can negotiate, people who can seek consensus to be able to deliver outcomes. That is the exact reason that we have Julia Gillard as Prime Minister now. Tony Burke, thank you. Good to talk to you.